I'm Senior Airman Elise Rich from the 131st Bomb Wing and your host for this edition of Missouri Guard TV. I'm here at Jefferson Barracks where later on you will learn more about this historic location. Up, go back to your corner bed, come out on We top. will feature a young retired soldier who is facing new challenges. General Danner, congratulations. And for our top story, the Missouri Adjutant General receives a prestigious honor. The University of Missouri and city, state, and national leaders gather on campus to honor the third annual Governor Mel Carnahan Award recipient. This honor is given to those who have made significant contributions through their public service. Dedicated their lives to the public University service. of Missouri's Harry S. Truman School of Public Affairs honored Missouri National Guard Adjutant General Steve Danner with the Governor Mel Carnahan Award. Very special moment. University of Missouri Chancellor Bowen Lofton said he was proud to present the award, which honors public servants. Uh, General Danner is a epitome of a, of a civil servant, a, a person who served uh, without much compensation, quite frankly, over a long period of time, this state and this nation. General Danner, congratulations. General Danner accepted the award on behalf of the 11,500 soldiers and airmen of the Missouri National Guard. And gentlemen, first the award has special significance for General Danner, who has known the Carnahan family for years as a law student, state legislator, and Missouri Guardsman. He remembers his late Commander-in-Chief fondly. He was uh, very supportive of what we've done in the Guard. He did a lot of uh, uh, great things uh, for the state of Missouri, and uh, it was an honor to uh, be with uh, uh, Mrs. Carnahan, Jean Carnahan, former senator. Along with the award, General Danner received a thousand dollar check which he will donate to the Missouri National Guard Family Resiliency Center in memory of the late governor. Donating uh, that money to the Missouri National Guard Foundation for the Resilience Center I think was a, a apropos way to do it. Reporting for the Missouri National Guard, I'm Mark Owen. The National Guard slogan is always ready, always there. The Missouri National Guard is helping citizen soldiers and airmen live up to that slogan with the construction of a new resiliency center. With the record winner behind us, progress is moving forward at the Ike Skelton training site in Jefferson City, Missouri. The groundbreaking took place in late January and the mission continues with the building of the Missouri National Guard Resiliency Center. Colonel Gary Gilmore, the state chaplain for the Missouri National Guard, explains the center will give readiness and strength to soldiers, airmen, and their families. Strength is your physical fitness and your medical fit fitness for sure, but you've got to have the heart to fight. You've got to believe in your values and you've got to be committed to your, your country and your family and your community. And that's what, what we strengthen on the care team. It was funded through donations made to the Missouri National Guard Foundation, including a donation from the Adjutant General, Major General Steve Danner. Supporting the resiliency mission has been a part of his strategic plan since he became State Adjutant General in 2009. The Resiliency Center is expected to open this summer. Reporting for the Missouri National Guard, I'm Dana Elise Smith. Hey, good to meet you. Where are you? Members of the Missouri Air National Guard's 131st Bomb Wing and the active duty 509th Bomb Wing have welcomed the U.S. Air Force's top enlisted official. Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force, James Cody, visited Whiteman Air Force Base and saw B-2 operations and readiness support missions firsthand. In 2013, the 131st became the only nuclear certified Air National Guard Wing. Chief Cody applauded both the 131st and their 509th active duty peers for being the benchmark of total force integration. We're one Air Force and everything we do is an Air Force we do together. And it's what makes us great. And I look at each and every one of you and I look at a capability. I really do. I look at a capability that has proven itself time and time and time again. The road to integration was not easy. In 2008, members of the 131st began the 200-mile move from Lambert Field in St. Louis to Whiteman Air Force Base. 
The move challenged both guardsmen and active duty members to work as a team. The more you're segregated physically from your counterparts, the, the less likely they are to think of you and to include you. And I think the more you can uh, be face to face with them in their office, talking with them about problems and showing up to their meetings, the more you do that, the, the quicker they fold into the mix. Chief Cody said the specific mission drives the integration of the Guard, Reserve, and active duty components. You do it because it makes sense based on the mission that you're doing and the capabilities that each of those components bring together. If they can complement each other and work with each other, you absolutely do it. But you don't do it just to say you've done it. Chief Cody said in today's Air Force, it doesn't matter whether an airman comes from the Guard, Reserve, or active duty. What matters is how each airman does their job. Senior Airman Elise Rich, Whiteman Air Force Base, Missouri. State Treasurer Clint Zweifel visited with military and local leaders here at Jefferson Barracks to discuss the economic impact of the Missouri National Guard and the community. Jefferson Barracks was established in 1826 and is the longest continued operating military installation west of the Mississippi River. Today, this location is still a big part of the Missouri National Guard and the local area, bringing in about $36 million a year for the state. Missouri State Treasurer Clint Zweifel is pleased with the investment. When you look at the Department of Defense and the military installations all across our state, you're talking about 15% uh, of our state's economy, uh, 265,000 jobs, $40 billion worth of investment. So, you know, first, of, first and foremost, we're doing the right thing when we support Missouri's installations here. Director of the Missouri National Guard Joint Chief of Staff, Brigadier General David Newman, was on hand to give Treasurer's Weifel a tour of the facility. General Newman was base commander of Jefferson Barracks 12 of the 20 years while stationed there. He knows the importance of the economic impact for this area. The future missions and the current missions for not only the United States on the federal mission, but how we can put those missions and the mission sets to support Missouri. Treasurer's Weifel conducted this visit as the Missouri Military Partnership Lead from Missouri Governor Jay Nixon to continue to protect and further the military investments that have been made by the state. Reporting for the Missouri National Guard, I'm Mark Owen. More than two centuries of military tradition and architecture meets the armed forces' most advanced technology and high-speed mission here at Jefferson Barracks. On its surface, Jefferson Barracks looks similar to when the post was established in 1826. Command Sergeant Major Jay Marsden with the 70th Troop Command says he is humbled by the opportunity to be a part of such a proud military tradition. That sense of pride, uh, it's such an honor to be able to look out across there knowing that we're carrying on the tradition. Uh, of, of the military, we're carrying on the tradition of the uh, Missouri National Guard. You know, I can't say enough about that. First CAV actually started here. They had the first parachute jump from an airplane here back in 1912. Despite the 19th century appearance, Jefferson Barracks houses one of the Guard's most high-tech operations. Over the past few years, $30 million have been spent on the 110-acre post. Here's the main game. Brigadier General David Newman helped shepherd the facility through its many upgrades. This is a great example of blend of, of uh, history and current operations. We have capabilities here, not only communication, but intelligence, and the facilities are state of the art. But we have kept the facade of Jefferson Barracks to reflect the early 1900s, late 1800s of the military heritage. Reporting from the Missouri National Guard, I'm Mark Owen. When we return, we will meet a young retired soldier who is facing new challenges after being injured in Iraq. For over 375 years, our nation's citizen soldiers have sacrificed, struggled, and triumphed at home and abroad. Through resolve, resilience, and readiness, our Army National Guard continues its proud legacy. As citizen soldiers, we are your next door neighbors. We're your colleagues in school, offices, and factories. In every corner of America, the Army National Guard is nearby. We have a stake in the safety and security of our community. After all, that is where we live. We serve in Afghanistan, Iraq, the Balkans, Africa, the Sinai, and the United States' southwest border. 
We are citizens. We are soldiers. We are your neighbors. We are always ready. We are always there. The Army National Guard. Over 375 years of value and vigilance. Spectators in the heartland gather in a small southwest Missouri town to watch a mixed martial arts tournament. The card holds 17 fights for the night, but most of the fans come to see one fighter in particular. Good. Now can you throw me a one-two? One. Good. One. one. I think that the way he can draw a crowd into the show was what most promoters want. Mm. That was a good one. Some have said this fighter has a small burden. From your mouth. Keep I think he has any advantage to any other fighter, you know. People say he has a disadvantage, but if anything, it's an advantage for him. Step one. This MMA fighter is Missouri National Guard Sergeant Joshua Rector. Again. People tell me I can't do something. That alone is one of the things. I mean, there's a lot of different things that drive me. It is part of my identity, but it's not something I don't let it stop me. Good job. Rector comes to the ring as a seasoned warrior with a strong drive to succeed and focus on the mission ahead. Yet, an uninformed observer may say he is at a disadvantage. He has one arm, but when I see him, he has, he has all the weapons he needs for a fight. In August 2008, Rector started living his childhood dream by joining the Missouri National Guard. In early 2010, his unit got orders to serve in Iraq. Day 32 of that year-long tour changed Rector's life forever. We were coming back off a mission, and while coming around the curve, my driver corrected just a little too much and uh, accidentally dumped the truck. Rector was severely injured. He was taken to Walter Reed Hospital in Washington, D.C. for surgery and six months of physical therapy. I would say the way that it's changed me is that it just, uh, I have to figure out new ways to do everything, and I'm a more driven person now. Rector overcame the struggles of getting back into shape and learned how to use his prosthetic arm through the therapy he received. When the time came for him to be released from the hospital, one thought was on his mind, getting back to his unit in Iraq. You feel an obligation to go back, you know, and, you know, help those guys out because you don't want to leave them behind. His request was denied. Rector came back to Company D, 1st of the 138th Infantry in Anderson. Although he was still serving, his overall physical fitness had suffered. I woke up and I said, this is wrong. Rector turned to mixed martial arts for a way to focus and get back into shape. Not everyone felt that this was a good direction for him. And my drive, you know, to do this, I just, there's a lot of people who say, oh, well, you know, you probably can't do that because you have one hand. I think the more people tell him that it's not possible, the more he works on finding a way. I love to be able to prove people wrong like that. And that is exactly what he did as an MMA fighter. When I first met Josh, you know, he came to me and he wanted to lose a little bit of weight and get in shape, and he eventually wanted to fight. The hard work and dedication was obvious with Richter's first official fight against Brandon Collins just a few months ago. He's a strong opponent, and I was, I was honored to fight him. I'd do it again if I have to. Brandon came by the arena to watch Richter fight his second fight. Good seeing you, man. I hope you bring home this W. And fighting out of the red corner, 6-2. I think he's, he's taking it home for sure. He's bringing home that W. Red ready, timekeeper, let's go. Stop, stop. It was a great fight, you know. Uh, he, he shocked me, he surprised me. Uh, you know, I didn't expect him to come out banging, and that's what he did. And I just, you know, I felt a lot of pressure to make sure I got that win, but and a lot of people were telling me that I couldn't stand with him, and so I decided, you know, that I was. And, it, you know, it turned out well, and I'm feeling really good now. Not only because of his undefeated record, but knowing he is doing something, and it will be done to the best of his ability. Though he received his medical retirement from the Missouri National Guard, he takes with him the values he has learned as a soldier and put it to use in his new career. The military didn't turn out exactly the way I thought it was going to, obviously, but I'm very glad I did it. You know, I wouldn't be the person I am without it. Reporting for the Missouri National Guard, I'm Mark Owen. Stay right there. There's more to come on MoGuard TV. As citizen soldiers, we are your next door neighbors. We're your colleagues in school, offices, and factories. In every corner of America, the Army National Guard is nearby. 
The Army National Guard. Soldiers and airmen here at Jefferson Barracks demonstrated their comprehensive training on conducting funeral honors. Missouri has a very outstanding military funeral honors program. Ready, step. The training that we had today we call a mark training. It's a markup training. And uh, the National Training Center for all the National Cemetery reps is here in St. Louis. We were uh, training for uh, a full nine-man detail, which includes Paul Bearing and um, a full rifle team. Ready, step. Uh, first and foremost, we must give attention to detail at all times during our job. You know, the smallest things we have to pay attention to. Because we're honoring our brothers and sisters who have served the country faithfully. And the one thing we'd like to do is give them a proper military send-off. It's the last thing that, that everybody sees, or some a member of the family or a friend, they've never seen military honors or anything, or ain't seen anything of the military. So we gotta make sure we're, you know, we're uh, clean, crisp, and correct. You get two DOD personnel to fold and present the flag to the next of kin. Detail. We have is three fires. Port. Huh. They fire three times. Half right. Hey. So it's a three rifle volley. With three rounds. Ready? Aim. Fire. Aim. Fire. Aim. Fire. Present. Huh. And the family's entitled to tents. That's our goal, is every time that we come out and do a service, that we do it very professionally and we want people to be touched by it. It's out with the old and in with the new, as the Museum of Missouri Military History moves from its old location to its new, bigger and better location at Missouri National Guard headquarters. This million dollar project has transformed an empty building into a world-class museum. It's out of the old into the new, as the Museum of Missouri Military History staff moves from its old location to a bigger and better one at the Missouri National Guard headquarters. This million dollar project has transformed an empty building into a world class museum that showcases the challenges and triumphs of the Missouri's Minutemen. The Adjutant General, Major General Stephen Danner, understands that there's a great sense of esprit de corps in our history and that it's an opportunity for our soldiers to come and see their own history and see where they've been and where they're going. The goal for this 6,500 square foot facility is a sensory experience to help people understand a little bit of what life was like in the past. Get that whiff of the tent. It smells funny. I was when we have the ultimate product, we will be able to stimulate different senses, not only the sense of, uh, uh, of hearing and seeing, but the smell. There are items that I will look at and, and will remind me of, of my experience having spent a year in Ramadi, Iraq. This new home is not only to showcase the recent conflicts of the 21st century, this is to remember where Missouri was during the early growth of the state. And you're going to put a brush and, and things like that in there? Missouri National Guard members have balanced the dual mission to serve during natural disasters within its borders and serve globally. I want to have two exhibits specifically on state emergency duties to help the public to understand better what the National Guard does, not just fighting the wars, but also take care of our public here at home. The new building will allow students to have a new appreciation of the Missouri military history. This opportunity gives school kids of all ages more than just a textbook understanding of their state's past. So you can read it in a book, but, but when you see a display and when you see uh, explanations about the displays and when you have a trained docent that can walk with you and answer your questions or, or explain what you're looking at, it has far more meaning and it, it imprints better. The Missouri National Guard invites all veterans, retirees, the future service members and residents to come and visit the new Museum of Missouri Military History when the doors open later this year. 
Follow the Missouri National Guard on social media for the grand opening details. Reporting for the Missouri National Guard, I'm Mark Owen. I will now introduce you to a Missouri Air National Guard recruit with a wild day job. Two happy female hippos at the Kansas City Zoo. These girls are enjoying sliced fruit from their handler, Casey Self. Casey is a zookeeper and has recently enlisted in the Missouri Air National Guard as part of the 131st Bomber. How old are they? They are 29 and 27. Some days we'll work the chimpanzee routine, which is just the chimpanzees. Um, we also have the hippo routine, which is the hippos, the crocodiles, um, our quarry busters, and our tortoises. And then we have the wild dog and baboon routine. Casey believes that working for peaceful solutions for mankind will in turn mean peaceful solutions for the world's wildlife. This is Senior Airman Elise Rich, 131st Bomb Wing, Whiteman Air Force Base. Now let's go to Army Sergeant Annika Jankowski in downtown St. Louis. I'm Army Sergeant Annika Jankowski here at the 45th Metropolitan St. Patrick's Day Parade in St. Louis, Missouri, where the 135th Army Band is leading the way. The 135th Army Band led the way at the 45th Metropolitan St. Patrick's Day Parade in St. Louis, Missouri. The Springfield-based unit, under the direction of Chief Warrant Officer 4 Robert Springer, marched in the celebration of Irish heritage. Army Sergeant Dakota Fletcher has been a member of the band for the past seven years. Sergeant Fletcher uses the energy of the audience to keep the unit in step. I literally really do feed off the crowd because it helps me play louder, you know, stronger and um, it just keeps me focused. The parade is regularly noted as one of the top in the country, with approximately 150 units, including marching bands, floats, and more than 5,000 marchers participating. Yeah! An estimated 250,000 spectators made the parade one of the largest of any downtown St. Louis event. Sorry, it's hatch beans and boys there. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. St. Louis Mayor Francis Slay believes National Guard participation in the event is vital to a sense of patriotism. certainly want to thank the U.S. military for all their work, thank all of you for your service, and uh, we, as beneficiaries of your, your hard work and your sacrifices, uh, cannot uh, express our appreciation enough. The parade was well received by an audience full of smiling Irish eyes and festive green attire. For the Missouri Army National Guard, I'm Army Sergeant Annika Jankowski. Now we go to the Adjutant General of the Missouri National Guard, Major General Steve Danner, for tag time. Thank you, Airman Rich. As you have seen on today's program, the new Museum of Missouri Military History is a state-of-the-art facility that will showcase Missouri's proud military heritage and tell the story of Missouri National Guard soldiers and airmen. Today's Guardsmen embody a legacy that is deeply rooted in a rich history of service both locally and globally. Knowing and preserving our history strengthens our force, ensures a culture of readiness, and empowers our service members. If you'd like to learn more about our Guardsmen, please follow us on social media. Until next time, on behalf of Governor Jay Nixon and our 11,500 citizen soldiers and airmen, thank you for your service and support.